Yo, what's poppin'? It's the Hyphen, and welcome back to another episode of the Doubt Me Podcast. Today's special guest is someone I've known for 10 years now. I started off being on his podcast. <laughs> now he's back again on my podcast. Today's special guest, Concept Universal. What's poppin', bro? What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too, man. Last time I saw you was my grand opening for Correct. Doubt Me Studios. That's right. That's yeah. right. So let me do something that uh, very few people uh, have done to me. Okay. Uh, let me give you your flowers first. Okay. 10 years and it has been a continuous growth. And you're one of these few people who have actually seen a continuous growth without very much pause, right? The only pause I would say would be like then during the pandemic. And mm -hmm. even that, I feel you just slowed down to the point where you actually, were. Actually, I think I did more during the pandemic. Well, I mean, like, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I think you took that time to like re, re game plan. Like, let's, we're, this is what's happening now. What's that next step for hyphenate? Because it was a lot of ideas. It was like, yeah. I, it didn't stop you from moving on to that next Bro, step. Gotcha. You yeah. know? And, and then I came to the opening. And dude, the studio is is amazing. Thank you, right? bro. Not just the podcast, right? It's also filming, and you could do pictures. Yeah, and you could do all, all kinds of different vibes. sets here: music yeah. videos, commercials, documentaries, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very hyped to have it. Not only as a, something I've wanted to do for a long time, as open yeah. up a studio that people could rent out and create their own productions in here, right. but also something for me to be able to create a bunch of my content. So right. hence, and, we're here doing my podcast right now. And your contest has always had that standard of high fit it standard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I've told you this before. I feel like you have a great sense of w a vision of what you want your product to look like and yeah. be. And I've never seen it come below that level of quality. Pursuing a lot of these dreams and trying to get recognized or elevate to a level where I feel internally like mm -hmm. I kind of belong in mm -hmm. and not getting any type of major push or acceptance or co-science or anything like that mm -hmm. not only have i been hungry to improve in a skill set wise but also the visuals everything i put out my videos my website my whatever it's always been trying to make sure that like it's undeniable mm -hmm. so like you might not think that i deserve to be here or that i won't make it to here not only am i going to show you skill and talent wise as i grind and i take every loss to improve mm -hmm. but also when you see something i put out there's no way you can say it's not dope that's like kind of like my mindset you yeah. know it, it, I'm, I'm sure I, I know i have put out some stuff that's not as dope sometimes mm -hmm. um throughout the years but that's always been kind of like a in the back of my mind actually not in the back in the front of my mind is like nah like whatever we do make it dope make it look good sound good feel good etc yeah. yeah like I, uh the presentation has, is always dope Thank i you, feel yeah. no matter what what it, what the outcome of how people will receive it mm -hmm. they can't deny the quality that's been like kind of, of a it. mission of mine for yeah. sure within the process like i yeah. you know I'm my main mission but that's been a part of the mission in what I create, right, for sure. Right. And from from someone who's been around a lot of artists for many years, uh, that's not always the case. Even yeah. even with the like, you'd say the veterans, right? Yeah. Some of the quality of the product has gone down consistently, yeah. and the pre the way they present that to their audience, they can't, they just can't keep up. And I think it's a lack of interest at some point. And I feel like you haven't lost the interest to but present. You, I'll add to it. that. It is hard work. Yeah. The present the my standard of quality yeah. requires a ton of hard work. Right, right, right. And people don't know know that yeah. they, in, unless they're trying to do it themselves uh -huh. and they see how hard it is. And I think that's why a lot of other artists or creators um, sometimes kind of dip on their mm -hmm. quality mm -hmm. is because it's hard to maintain a consistency of always putting out something at a higher level of quality because mm -hmm. it's, it's so much work. The setup, the process, the editing, the, you know, the resources needed to be able to execute. It, it's hard work. It's mm -hmm. not easy, man. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely kicked my ass many times, but it's, I have that drive where I'm like, no, I can't put out something that's okay. Like yeah. whatever I put out, I have to give it everything I have. Yeah, and Doubt Me Studios is definitely that, dude. So congratulations. I appreciate it, man. Well, yeah, I'm hyped to have absolutely. you here, bro. And yeah, I'm hyped thanks. to have you uh, I'm excited here, to be here on the pod. It's been yeah. a while yeah. since we've had a podcast episode. Right, right. We started talking recently more frequently because of some political stuff. Correct. And so... The last week has been... Uh, I, okay, so... Even having a podcast for whatever amount of years and you talk to people, it's still hard to find someone to have an intellectual conversation with about topics that aren't mainstream per se. So right. like we can all talk about, you know, the latest movie and by give me your opinion. But when it comes to politics, which is the, the subject we've like been, our country, world events, world events, um, right, right, right. Politics, essentially. Yeah. It's not very easy to, to have people that 
are especially like your podcast was mostly based around hip hop. Mm -hmm. My podcast is mostly based around people that are doing some type of activity within music or film or, you know, comedian mm -hmm. or whatever in a similar where it's more entertainment based. Right. Like we're we're both mostly entertainment based. So yeah. it's hard to find people that have like that curiosity to go and gather a bunch of information and mm -hmm. then be knowledgeable about topics. So right. Yeah, I mean, it's not to knock people that we haven't had conversations with about it, right? But mm -hmm. it is hard yeah. to come across people that know things that we can talk about in this realm. Right. And it's like like I told you, I think the what we suffer from is that we're both uh, smart enough and dumb enough to get involved into the politics area. <laughs> uh I have this. I try to have a conversation with people. And they're like, "Oh, bro, I don't even pay attention to politics, or I don't even watch the news. I stay away completely." Like it's they're bragging about it. Like, "Oh, hey, no, I'm I'm above that." And it's like, bro, it's literally how the world is working, how it works, how it operates. It's like the machinery of democracy is politics, and you're telling me you're willfully ignorant about it. Like you're just staying well. There's awake. that old saying, "Ignorance is bliss," and that is true. <laughs> Which is why I'm saying we're dumb enough when, because when you have it's a certain stressful. amount of knowledge. Not you're blessed with that knowledge, but yeah. then you're also cursed by that knowledge. Correct. So I honestly often don't like that I know as much as I know. Right. Because it is <laughs> you're not wrong. frustrating and it, it exhausting. Is. Right. Especially when like you come across other people that are not awake. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Like they're not aware of a lot of things. So yeah. it's I and my mom tells me this all the time. Like <clears throat> You know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say this in an egotistical way, but she's always telling me, dumb it down. Mm -hmm. Dumb yourself down around people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's, I struggle with that. And so then it is frustrating to like know things and then just, what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, and, it, and to me personally, it becomes frustrated because I'm not involved in politics mm -hmm. as in like, I'm not a politician. I, yeah. I don't. So I'm like, well, this should be done and that should be done. And no one, no one cares what concept has to say about politics because yeah. you're a hip hop guy yeah what do, you, what, what do you so they paint me on that on that thing and then i go to and i try to move it to politics and i get dismissed because yeah. they're assuming well you're a hip-hop guy what would you know about blank and blank yeah when in reality bro like uh and not to brag of me not me about myself but i have two degrees i'm working on my second bachelor's i'm an avid reader i'm an avid listener um i pride myself in being able to take in information mm -hmm digest it and then apply it to my life mm -hmm. so i would never have a conversation with someone who is in good will and they have good intentions in informing me of something that i might not know mm -hmm. so i will never block myself off from uh in information just because my own personal bias mm -hmm. might be against that or what i believe yeah. might be the opposite i want to take it in consume it and it, hey maybe it does apply and now i will apply it but even right? that, which is respectable, yeah. a lot of people don't even want to deal with that, taking in new information, because it becomes more work. Correct. It's work to yeah. learn something new, yeah. take on another perspective, yeah. and then to do the due diligence to see if the new information is correct or not, or possible. Right. right? It, again, the ignorance is bliss. It's so much easier to just not know about something mm -hmm. and then just go about your day. Mm -hmm. And I think systematically our government has put the American people to be like that. Mm -hmm. It's been planned strategically yeah. and executed in a way where people are forced to be so busy with their mm -hmm. lives that they want you to just gather bits and pieces of information from legacy mainstream media news, which is extremely corrupt from both sides. And so that way we can not know much and be frustrated with the info mm -hmm. we do get. Mm -hmm. So we just want to go watch football or basketball or, yeah. you know, go to the bar. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not knocking people for that because life is not easy, man. To be honest, like life is hard. And to try to balance out living a life and surviving and, yeah. and for a lot of people having a family and building out, you know, some type of comfortable living situation. Right. It requires so much time, energy and thought that most people don't want to go and put the time into learning other stuff, especially when you start to learn some of it. Mm -hmm. There's just so many. And then let's say they do layers. learn something. If it contradicts the beliefs that they already have, they'll stop researching that. Or they'll yeah. or they won't accept that as it's truth. It's overwhelming. Well, or, 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 or you mean like if they're just like hard headed? Yes. Where they're like 
We're no, like, well, my, well, my belief is this, and I'm telling you new information with factual yeah. proof. I'm, I'm going to stop listening to you because it, it, it directly conflicts with the way I live or the way I want to live. Yeah. So now I'm just not going to take that information. Yeah. And I think it was, and, I, and I'm going to sound like a douche because I'm, I'm sure I'm misquoting him. I think it was George Washington. He said, uh, um, an uneducated populace is a populace of slaves. So, I don't know who said that, but that's a phenomenal quote. When I read that, I was like, he's right. He's 100%. Because it, 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 slavery is not going to be always iron chains, yeah. but there's chains involved. Right, so right, there's right. bills. It's not, it's, slavery is not the, just physical. Correct, yeah. correct. There's mental slavery. There's spiritual slavery. There's emotional yeah. slavery. Right. Yeah. Um, so I I always want to um, ad- evolve. Yeah. I I 100 percent believe in revolution, and it starts from within. I always felt like right. Mm-hmm. Uh, even at a younger age, I knew that if I ended up being the same person at 40 that yeah. I am at 20, I failed. Right. If when, you have no growth. But here, unfortunately, and we can get into hip hop because that's what I know. There's a lot of artists uh, who pride themselves in. Be- I never changed. I'm always. I've been the same. I stay this, bro. That is not. A, that is not good. Yeah, bro, that is not a good. A, yeah. Since I was young, yeah, I remember people would say like a compliment. Like mm-hmm. if if I came across someone and they liked something about me, they'd be like, "Never change." Mm-hmm. And I just always thought like that's a, that's a weird thing to to think. <laughs> like why not? Yeah. Well, because I feel like, and I, I get the sentiment. The yeah. sentiment is the good parts about you stay that way. Yeah. I get it. But then it's also a blanket statement, which I'm not a fan of blanket statements, mm-hmm. period. But it's a blanket statement of like, stay who you are forever, mm-hmm. right? So I, I get the part of the, the idea of keep the good parts good. Mm-hmm. But then the other parts, I'm, am, I, am I not supposed to change either? Right. Like the parts that, <laughs> that I'm immature about yeah, or yeah. that I, I, I maybe make bad decisions with. Like, no, you yeah. should want to change. And I think Cat Williams had this incredible interview and they asked him, worst advice you ever got? Oh, he asked him about his best advice. That's a good question. And then the second question was, what's the worst advice <laughs> yeah, you ever got? That's good. And he said, his response to the worst advice he ever got was, don't ever change. Yeah. That's his worst ever advice. That's fantastic. It I is. love that, bro. It is. Today, I'm a different concept. Just from the week that you and me've had, mm-hmm. I, I feel that I've my mind has expanded even a little bit more. It's just from being able to go back and forth with different thoughts and ideas and different perspectives, yeah, maybe on the same idea, but a different perspective on it. And then I take it in and I go, Hey, he's right, yeah. or Hey, this verifies what I thought already, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, I'm very happy that we had that conversation. Yeah, let me let me kind of expand about that and kind of explain. Mm-hmm. From my perspective, yeah, I feel like since I've known you, I felt you're a good person. Mm-hmm. We've had you've you've been on my podcast several times, and the thing that I feel we've always gotten stuck on mm-hmm. is where you've had this habit, and it seems like it's you're breaking this habit, but mm-hmm. you've had this habit where you generalize, mm-hmm. and when you have a certain thought or outlook on a topic or a, a group of something or a political election or whatever right Mm -hmm. you blanket statement things Mm -hmm. and you go like super hard against it because there are factually things that are wrong or not just Mm -hmm. and so then that to me has been something that's kind of held you back in a certain way Mm -hmm. and you've been a huge trump hater Mm -hmm. like historically for years Mm -hmm. huge trump hater and Mm -hmm. constantly posting up pretty much every piece of content you come across Mm -hmm. that paints him in a negative light right and we were you were on my one of the podcast episodes that i believe is still up um that you say you were saying all trump haters all trump supporters are racist all trump supporters Mm -hmm. are this Mm -hmm. they're all terrible people and so like things like that we would get stuck in because i always push back on that because Mm -hmm. i don't like just generalizing and grouping people right Mm -hmm. but for a long time that I've seen you post stuff, like I've disagreed with 95% of your posts. Mm-hmm. And I don't really, when I, when I see people like that, I tend to not want to engage into any of these topics with Specific them topics, because I'm yeah. like, oh, this person's just so super close minded. Yeah. So in those, I feel like since I've known you as a human, mm-hmm. I've been a friend of yours. We've been good friends, even through the things that we disagree on. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you're very open-minded in many ways, but in, in certain things, politically-wise especially, mm-hmm. I felt you were very close-minded. Mm-hmm. So I really wouldn't engage with you. There was something you posted the other day, and I had just came across a video that was like, 
super disproving the thing that you shared. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like uh, concepts too smart uh, as a person. He's, he's, too, he's, he's not a dummy. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't have all this information. So like, let me just share this one piece with him and see how he receives it. But I wasn't like trying to engage back and forth with you. I just want like, yo bro, check this out because what you posted is kind of like nonsensical. Mm -hmm. Like, so you saw that and then that opened up you wrote back to me saying, I don't want to get into a political discussion. I value our friendship. And so you were like worried about that would be contentious for our Correct. friendship. Correct. Yes. And so I was like, cool, bro. Like, I, I don't want to go back and forth on politics with you, yeah. but just factually look at this, what was said, what you reshared, and that there is some other information out there that disproves that. So that, that disproves that. So you're sharing something that the news is saying is fact mm -hmm. when it's indeed not. And there's a lot of gray area at bare minimum. And then that opened up discussions. And then uh, we've just been having back and forth. And I've been sharing a lot of information that I've come across in a lot of different arenas from politics, government, uh, these what people would call conspiracy theories that have been factually proven are and are un, uh, and are officially released documents now mm -hmm. uh mk ultra these things yeah. with you know chaos and all that kind of stuff so i'm sharing a lot of information to you with you that's completely opposite almost of what you were saying a week and a half ago mm -hmm. and you've been receptive to it mm -hmm. so that opened up you and me having a lot of i think intellectual and healthy conversations right and so because I, I did find it dangerous to speak to other people especially friends and family about politics so mm -hmm. when 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 i posted it and you responded which you hardly respond to something that i post yeah at least in that arena yeah uh and then you said yeah i'm like no hi look it's 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 just better that we don't have yeah. this because i don't want to get into this with you but because you the way you responded you could have said all right cool i understand moving yeah. on but you were like no 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 no, hold on J -j just give me a sec check this out so then I, I I checked it out and I was like, hold on, is this maybe have I have I misunderstood the information that I got originally mm -hmm. and taken it as a fact? Yeah. And should I question it? So right. when I saw what you sent, I said, okay, well, what else you got? And yeah. then you sent something else, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, I understand. And then you open the floodgates, bro, because I've been bombarding you with so much. And I have articles and every piece. podcast interviews. Even though I will say some of the sources might I might think of dubious okay. a little bit, a little bit of the sources. And here's the thing: it's almost impossible to find information that doesn't have a bias right. by whoever is giving you the information, whether the person that wrote it or the network that's putting it out. Right. It's really hard to find someone that goes a hundred percent, fifty percent balance. Right. So I think what one should do, and you should be mature enough to do is understand that you have a built-in bias that has been built up i don't know let's say you're 40 40 years and now it's developed to this point and now you share stuff according to that bias but if the information is presented to you that contradicts that bias you should be mature enough to take it in and check it out and check it out yeah. give it the give it the opportunity to say hey maybe i can add it to the rolodex yeah it's not necessarily a negative right yeah and then and then that opens the doors of okay well here's this piece of information mm -hmm. i learned or was taught this what other information is out there and then start to see if there's consistency Correct. within your thoughts yeah or not outside of Especially, I, I consistently talk about this, legacy media news. Uh -huh. I feel legacy media news is the worst. Yeah. And so I will say a lot of what I would see you share as well was almost all legacy media news. Mm -hmm. I, I never really saw anything that you would share from mm -hmm. an independent journalist. Right. And I try, I, I, I actually uh, watch both left and right news, mm -hmm. small amounts. Mm -hmm. I'll take a few here, a few here. But I would say 80%, 85% of what I intake is mostly from independent journalists, mm -hmm. people that are not assigned to the Republican or the Republican or Democratic Party. I try to follow people that are in the independent, that kind of are unbiased, that have a track record of calling out both sides. Mm -hmm. That's what I care most about. Like, mm -hmm. right. where's the track record of people who call out both sides equally? Yeah. And when something's wrong that someone does, do they also call out the wrong from the other? Mm -hmm. And if there isn't wrong in the other on this topic, do they keep it fair and without emotion? Yeah. I try to follow, especially journalists that 
don't come from a place of anger or frustration or being loud. That stuff gets irritating. And I'm like, oh, like they're getting too emotional. Right. I like to be like, someone's like, here are the facts. Here, here are the, where I found this. It's this book, this article, yeah. this photo from this journalist, photographer who was there, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And like, okay, there's something that could be tracked. There's a paper trail. Yeah. That's what I try to do. And so what, yeah, for what I started sharing a lot with you was stuff that was not just from legacy media. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm just... I appreciate you being open-minded and just even talking to me about yeah. stuff. And, uh, and, and because like I said, I, I, yeah. you're a smart dude. I just felt like you were lacking some information. I was hungry for that. Mm -hmm. So when you, cause I, it, cause I myself was like, I'm getting, I'm looking for information on a specific topic. And then I realized that most of it was coming from the same source. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm just, I think I'm smart enough to realize, okay, that can't be good. Right. I was like, okay, this can't be good. And I'm looking for story, and I'm like, well, you know, I don't know, I don't know it. I don't trust any other source because I don't really know them or I'm not aware of them. So I'm like, I don't know who that is. I don't know who she does. I don't know who that is. You know. So when you send something, I'm like, all right, cool. At least it's source of information from anywhere else. Let's yeah. take it in and let's see where it leads us. And what I keep using is let's go down this rabbit hole. Let's go yeah. blank it down this <laughs> yeah. rabbit. And and I'm down. Like I mean, yeah. I am fucking Alice in Wonderland. I'm happy to go down those <laughs> rabbit holes, bro. Yeah. I because I health intellectual health i yeah. think is really dismissed in this country it's obvious right yeah. that there's a there's a epidemic of just being fat mentally or unhealthy <laughs> yeah. mentally right yeah. uh, as well there's as no mental exercise correct in how the media gives us information yeah. yeah and i'm excited to do this podcast in general because it also it now uh hip-hop and, and entertainment in general right has a huge um uh, grasp on society especially like the youth so uh, any any time that hip-hop or any uh legitimate good well-produced uh outlet can bring information to people and i can be a part of that let's fucking do it yeah. right let's, let's, let's number one let's let's do that yeah do you feel like you're born again or like no 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 how do you feel though because yeah. it is a whole new perspective yeah. than what than what you've been pushing yeah. saying and yeah. preaching yeah exclaiming about on social media right right right. uh first let's say i don't i'm not looking to get in a debate with you yeah. i'm looking to share thoughts and information yeah. just like we've been doing yeah and it would be a fool's errand for me to say i'm gonna go in there and convince hyphenate that this yeah. perspective is correct how do you feel with because i overloaded you with a lot of info yeah because you know like, like i told you this the other day like i personally barely even listen to music anymore i'm mm -hmm. i would say like probably 95 no, 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 95. 85 or 90 percent of what I'm listening to yeah. while I'm editing, while I'm setting up gear for a shoot, while I'm driving, mm -hmm. I barely even listen to music anymore. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do because I just need a little bit hype or I just want to, you know, not think too much. But I'm almost always listening to podcasts mm -hmm. uh, or audiobooks or things that can teach me something, and that's mm -hmm. damn near all I do now yeah. while, while I'm doing something that doesn't require me to be speaking to another person. The, the ping pong of ideas yeah. going back and forth. So, so when we started talking about things and you were starting to be receptive, I'm like, yeah. well, here's this from three years ago. Yeah. Here's this from this yeah. week. Here's this from two years ago. Yeah. Like, so there's a lot of info. So I, I feel like I overloaded you maybe on some stuff, but like, how do you feel with all the info? I was hungry. I Sick, ate it all man. up. There's no overloading. Like I, I'm, 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 hyped. I'm hyped about that. I'm excited too. Yeah. So, so let's... Uh, Let's get into yeah, it. Yeah, you then. said you had some topic in, <laughs> topics in mind that you wanted to talk about. You so. know, I mean, if we if we go straight specific into it, right? Uh, first, let me point out uh, Puff Daddy, right? <laughs> P Diddy. Uh, and uh, the reason I bring this up is because there's moments when uh, I've had my. But he invited you to a party. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I've had the, I had the podcast where I've talked about certain things that I was privy to, and you know, like Talib Kali being a horrible person, and then he gets kicked off of Twitter for like harassing a girl, right? Puff Daddy being a horrible person, and then he then finally le legal catches up to him because yeah. this is very much already well known, and this is what happens when like uh, when the whole industry doesn't speak, right? So like uh, Bill Cosby, dude, there wasn't a person around Bill Cosby that didn't know he was doing that, but there was no legality following those wait, 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 actions. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so a statement like that yeah. is something I'm weary about when you say. Okay. There wasn't a person around him who didn't know. Yeah. So I think sometimes you speak in those ways. That, yeah. That's where like okay. I'm just I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump in though. Yeah. Whenever I feel that you're making these blanket statements. Well, let me say it's hard to, when you're trying to express thoughts and jump into thoughts, right? Yeah. To say 
to be like, hold on, let me give you a list specifically oh, of anyone yeah, so who just, knew. So just to be clear. So Cause, most, cause it's possible yeah. that there were people around him who a lot he, of people. he didn't see that, that who didn't see that side though. But there's a lot that did. I mean, for sure. For, but you can't say you, you said you literally said okay. Uh, 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 and, and, and words you, matter. You, yeah, you the words, words matter, matter because yeah. that's what like sure Trump does so sometimes. Let me rephrase or that's what let you me know. Rephrase it. Yeah. There was a lot of people. In his, in his immediate orbit and outside his immediate orbit, I can people agree with that. that he worked with that knew he was doing these things. Correct. Uh, the reason that it went public is because one comedian finally spoke out about it, gave uh, during his, his stand up, someone recorded it, and then the news spread to everybody else mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. didn't know this. Okay. Uh, that's one, right? The Puff Daddy thing. People, the, Puffy's parties were notorious right, right. in but the entertainment that, industry, right? We're, you're not, we're not going to say everyone who went to his parties knew. Right, that's not what I said. I know, no, no, no. Well, okay. I'm just, before we even get into it, right. because there are a lot of people who went to his parties, a ton of, pretty much everybody. I'm sure who were in preview to that room in the back. Well, it's a, well uh, from, from what I heard, it's, right? it's a whole bunch of rooms, but the, that was, uh, <laughs> yes, from, from what I've seen, a, a bunch of, of interviews yeah. is that there were after after parties mm -hmm. so you have a party then a little after party mm -hmm. and then when a good chunk of people would leave is when certain people stayed sure and nobody knew mm -hmm. or not nobody the, the the people from interviews of uh, celebrities that i've seen who said they're claiming, they, well, claiming. That they didn't know right? okay yeah but it's possible yeah it, it, so sure, for example, for example like, we know for a fact that there's a bunch of fucking going around yeah right you're definitely having a you know potentially prostitutes and stuff like that and to be honest like that's not even that sleazy when yeah. you're at that level of fame and you have access to high-end escorts or whatever sure. like that's kind of like okay whatever you kind of expect that at that level yeah it's the force the, the, the force right? stuff that's correct, bad correct. right so there are probably a lot of people who knew oh people get buck wild at the night yeah you know, in the night, in the, yeah. the after, after. And so there are probably good people that just didn't want to be around orgy type stuff. Or didn't understand or didn't know that that person might not have been there out of their own will. That, that's Exactly. Sure. That's my point. Sure. So there's a big difference between people knowing that someone is engaging in a lot of wild sexual activity, mm -hmm. which is consensual. Correct. Which are, most people do. Right. Versus when it becomes forceful. And so... It seemed like from what from what I've gathered just from a bunch of interviews is you wouldn't be invited to that later part ah. if you were someone who seemed to it, like they, they, they would scout you out essentially to see if your morals were flexible mm -hmm. or if you would be into some type of, you know, it's like sure. it, they kind of like, oh, like, are you want to try this? Do you yeah. want to do this? Yeah. And so once you kind of get into that inner circle, then you get in, into that. So yeah. there are definitely a lot more people in that inner circle than than we know of and right. we'll probably ever know. Ever know. Right. But I would say that there are probably a good chunk of people who've gone to his parties who didn't even know it got that crazy. Right. Right, right, yeah. But uh, the stuff he's done has now, it, it's atrocious. For right? sure. And, and, Horrible human and, being. And, and what people need That to, video of him with Cassie is so upsetting. And, and this is stuff that I would, that I or that I knew about and that I was talking on the podcast. I had the writer of the NWA movie, right? Yeah. The night before he won the Oscar for writing it, okay? He, hap he was on my podcast. That's when he divulged something that I already knew because I had already looked up other interv other interviews with people saying the same thing. Him, someone who uh, re re uh, really researched the NWA history, mm -hmm. uh, was able to s verify the involvement of Puffy with Tupac's murder. So he himself, and you can look this up on the podcast. He has he himself is, tells me uh, that Puff had paid someone a million dollars to kill Tupac. And I was there. I don't he, remember that part. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, and I'll shoot it to you. And yeah. paid... Um, well, you should repost that uh, if you have that on your pod. Here's the problem. When when it was live, I told everyone I knew, I told all the outlets I was privy to, none of them believed it. None of them had none, wanted to touch it. They were like, nah, we'll move on from that story. And I'm like, listen, he paid someone to have Tupac killed uh, he gave them the gun to kill Tupac, and he told them where he would be at the uh, at, at, at. It's okay, and they're like, "No, no, no we're not going to move on. We're not going to do that." Okay, this, okay. this is all on the pod. Yeah, yeah this is on the this on is your episode. On my episode, this is where, where he talks about. He, right, you should reshare that now. Let's stop and, what we're doing. Post it. Okay, up. and I'm and I'm and a great idea. Yeah, and, and I'll do that. Uh, so all I'm saying is, uh, I've already known like the character of him, and now that the legal stuff is finally catching up to him, I hope that this Rightfully is added. So. This is added on so when the cops were asked about it so like they asked him the las vegas pd right they asked him 
Um, if Puff Daddy is known to have done this and you have informants that are giving you informants that were dead to rights, by the way. So dead to rights means uh, your your right of of uh, of incriminating yourself is you're going to sign that away for this deal. Okay. Your right of not saying, you're going to, so dead to rights, meaning when you lie, if you lie, you're found dead, you're going to go either to jail for life or for a very long time. So he, they had informants that were dead to rights telling them, Puff Daddy paid me to do this or Puff Daddy did that or I saw him do that. And they asked him, why, so why aren't you pursuing charges? And here's the what the, what the Las Vegas Police Department uh, officer said, or the detective. He said, um, you're taking the word of someone who's already a known criminal, the informant, against the word of a of a mogul with millions of dollars worth yeah, of there representation. There's no tangible proof. So there's no way, even though we believe this guy, yeah. there's no way to really pursue it because it'll just be his millionaire yeah. lawyers will just be able to find dismissive yeah, forms and that's why and paper blah, blah, trail blah. is important. But now the problem is, it's that when the district attorney of any state takes on a case they're not going to lose that case because if they are pressing charges they have the info they have it yeah but now even that with everything that's happening with diddy i don't know if that's gonna i don't know if he's gonna get linked on paper in trial for the for the tupac for the tupac because sure, they because now that, they that doesn't that doesn't seem likely they don't need that now so that that might even be an avenue they don't pursue because because what, yeah, right now they're getting him for all the what, the crazy sexual and, shit, and he will go to jail. So some yeah, of the crimes he's sure. he's accused of uh, have a minimum sentence of ten years. So here's the biggest thing with yeah. all this: is he going to get Epstein? Because it, factually, th without a doubt, there had to be some he, real celebrities no, that he's, were there. He, right? Well, he has Involved? tapes on people. Have you seen the video of him? By the way, he, like. Okay, several videos. Yeah. Have you seen the video of Justin Bieber crying, talking about wanting to protect Billie Eilish? From Puffy? No, no, no. He doesn't say any In names. general? He just says, I, I wanna... don't want her to go through what I went through or something like that. So just, just, so, just to give but you context. What's the, yeah, what's the context of that? Well, are you familiar with him staying with Diddy and, <laughs> Di and Diddy taking him for a couple days? No, and I did not. Know. He actually tried getting... Okay, okay. <laughs> That's so, wild. So there's a whole bunch of... <laughs> they're like... so. Did he try getting Bieber uh, to be like uh, under his um, guardianship? Couldn't get it. Oh, okay. Usher ends up getting yeah Bieber, who, who is credited with discovering Bieber is Usher. Correct. Yes. But but Usher was really close with Diddy. Of course. Then through Usher, Diddy. There's there are videos of this. Yeah. Diddy ended up. They have a video where Diddy's saying, oh, I have custody of him for two, for 48 hours. We're going to do crazy stuff. We're going to blah, blah, blah. This is videos of him. And he he gives them a, a, like a Lambo or something. He, and Bieber can't even drive yet. So, so anyway, point is, there are just things where, a lot of things, where young Bieber is excited to be around sure. Diddy. And Diddy's, the, the, Bieber's a minor at this point. But Diddy's <laughs> posting up videos saying, we're going to party. Oh, man, it gets crazy, huh? How crazy has it been? It's been crazy, huh? And Bieber's like, yeah, it gets crazy. Yeah. Right? Like, clearly. Yeah. They're not playing video games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? And so, then fast forward to more more recently, Bieber's, like, definitely gone through some shit. Posting, uh, doing an interview talking about he wants to protect Billie Eilish because he doesn't want her to go through it. She doesn't, he doesn't want her to go through what he went through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it, these are all just different things, but when you start to connect the dots, it's like, damn, there's another video of older Bieber already running into Puffy somewhere. They dap each other up. What's up? How you been? Boom, boom. And by this point, the body language from Bieber to Diddy is doesn't look happy to see his friend. Sure. And in the video, Diddy pulls him close and like whispers something in his ear. And while he's doing that, he's doing this. He's tapping him down, checking to see if he has a wire. <laughs> this video of this, bro, it's crazy. So anyway, That's wild, my dude. point is yeah. that there are for sure, they've and they've said this, they've announced that there are a bunch of tapes that they mm -hmm. have in possession, mm -hmm. which are clearly have been used like Epstein had mm -hmm. for bribery, for blackmail, for whatever, right? Yeah. So 
These, there, pe these people doing some wild shit. So your, your question was, is he going to get Epstein? Well, there's a lot of celebrities that are bound to be in those videos. That's my point. Right? Not, not only celebrities. Oh, well, I mean, I don't, know who, who, I don't know who went to the puffy party. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's known that a lot of celebrities attended them. A lot, a lot so, of high profile people, oh, not, just not just entertainment people. So this is going to be interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. So, it's gonna be so he's got a lot of dirt on a lot of people yeah. like Epstein. Yeah. Now he's gonna be in jail. Yeah. Denied bail. Yeah, the denied bail. So you know after having so offered it, the so court fifty million dollars to let him yeah. go. So they, 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 the court was a no no yeah. no. So so what I would like, which yeah. they haven't done with Epstein, bro, is get the people involved also. Go after the other people involved. Yeah. Well, now you're talking, like you said, you're talking about politicians and people that, you know, com maybe congressmen. It Which is why who's Epstein. Involved. Epstein what? Oh, 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 they took him out. There was definitely, no, that, that wasn't him to himself. Okay, you don't think he hung himself like they, of they, course like not. they stated? The, 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 so many professionals and experts have came out actually breaking down the damage on his everything. And it's like nothing aligns to that. It's, it all looks like it was forced. And if I if I remember correctly, the cameras miss, uh, everything. weren't working. Yeah. And and the guards were uh, sleeping on their posts, of course, and they got of course. ridden There's up a for tale that. Old as time, it's all these are all old tactics. Sure, like when you when you study like the history of a lot of these things that happen yeah. throughout history. Yeah, these are old tactics. Sure, sure. Yeah. So so let's let's talk about the old tactics, right? One of the things that they really I think what you were referring to uh, me originally posting was something about the Haitian immigrants and mm -hmm. and the uh, the the phrasing of Donald Trump's. Uh, 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 Debate, mm -hmm. which we both agree, the dude is his own worst enemy when it comes to talking. He 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 he's not politically. He well, he's only been a politician for four years, right? When he was when he was president. Mm -hmm. Before that, he was not a politician. He was an entertainer. Yeah. So he spoke like an entertainer would speak, and and he still does that. I mean, he's seventy something. He's well, not going to change that. Well, he does these things right? where he speaks in definites and blanket statements, like yeah. I like talked about earlier. Uh huh. That's that's the the biggest issue. Yeah. Is if you speak some truths. Mm -hmm. But then you say things in general mm -hmm. that blankets across more people mm -hmm. and that's not fully true or not true at all when with other people being added in, then it almost starts to discredit itself. The phrasing was they're eating the dogs. They're the, eating the pets, right? Which they, there are many reports from the citizens. But like you're saying, blanket is they are me referring exactly, to the and Haitian. That's the problem. When he should have said, I have some there reports are, of a immigrant or a some, Haitian. Or, or one or two or whatever. Yeah. Who well, there are multiple reports. This, yes, right? correct. And I think it started with a duck and a goose, and then that evolved to pets. So, well, there there are different reports. So there are different reports. So even if there's one guy, even if there's five guys, that they're eating the pets is not the right phrasing that a person running for president should be using. Correct. Just correct. like I should not yeah, be yeah, using yeah. No. those blankets. Correct. He, I agree. He should be. I saw reports of various right. or many and or so, some. So that's how we started our conversation because right. you shared something that was completely calling him a liar or a, a crazy person, a, a kook, yeah. right? Right. And completely discrediting anything he said as right. complete fallacy. On that subject. On that subject. On that specific subject. And then yes. I sent you a video. Mm -hmm. that had a collection mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. from Springfield, Ohio. Mm -hmm who were actually speaking on this. Mm -hmm. One of which is a, a, a pretty known influencer in that area mm -hmm. who is constantly in the streets documenting crazy things happening. Right. A lot of his com the comedy videos and stuff like that, but a lot of them uh, revolve around a lot of Haitian accidents or, or things within these Haitian migrants that have came into his city, right? Mm -hmm. And so he even, in he's talking to, sit to the, the town hall meeting, right? Talking to the city council members and mm -hmm. he's saying, I shouldn't even be over here talking about this. Like, it's so weird for me to be taking time out of my day doing what I do, which is just doing fun entertainment stuff, mm -hmm. coming over here to tell you about this stuff. These mm -hmm. are problems. There are reports from not just that I'm, I'm getting, but people are calling me and asking me about this because he has some influence in the city. I understand that. Right? But the problem is that also a, a presidential candidate speaking about that um it doesn't affect the nation so there's the, the only you got to think about why he would bring that up he didn't start off saying that's what's happening across the country no right so what i which is exactly what i'm my point my point yeah. is why bring that up in a presidential debate why bring up that topic you could have talked about anything else why bring up that specific topic of them eating the dogs and eating your pets but why not why well, how's that helpful it to him? Because it's actually how's a really that big problem to his in that specific town. City? 
I'm from California. If I, if you're looking for my vote, what do I, why do I need to know that there's a a slight small group of immigrants who are eating ducks and gle- I have no, that's not going to help me. What it does, See, it opens it. it it opens you up, the person saying it, to criticism, because the phrasing he used sounded ridiculous. You have to understand the full context, not a soundbite. Mm-hmm. So he brought up the immigration issue, correct, and Kamala's policies, right. That are bringing in a bunch of migrants, right? Legally, turning them legally, yeah, legally, legal right? migrants, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so he, but he's bringing up immigration, yeah. the open border, and the policy that they're doing to turn illegal immigrants to legal migrants, right. Into certain areas, and they're placing them in places, yes, right. So what happened in Springfield? They brought in, yeah, fifteen thousand is the approximate, right? Some people are saying 12,000. Some are saying 15. Some are saying 20. Mm-hmm. Let's just say 15, right? Okay. They factually did bring in 15,000 mm-hmm. migrants from Haiti. Patients. Yes. Right? I agree that Trump doesn't articulate great. Mm-hmm. And so that is a problem. Mm-hmm. And so he'll say these blanket statements or he'll say one thing which is factually true and then he'll jump into another thing mm-hmm. that's connected. Mm-hmm. But the way he says it Leaves room for people to attack him, his opponent, mm-hmm. including the the media, mm-hmm. to take. Oh, he said this, and it applies to everything. Mm-hmm. When he's not saying that, what mm-hmm. he's doing, and he this is this is where one of his flaws is. Mm-hmm. He'll say one thing and jumps to the next thing, but it's almost like a run on sentence. Yeah. So it sounds like he said this is all this. He's calling it the weave. By the way, you seen him do that. There's a great, there's a great, I'm saying, I do the weave. You guys know what the weave is? I weave in different topics back and forth. That's funny. But that's, yes, that's, that's what true. he calls it. That's true. Okay, so he brings up immigration. Mm-hmm. The problem with that. And then he starts bringing up examples. Yes. But again, he says them in run-on sentences. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like he's saying that this problem in this town is every migrant, every immigrant, right. blah, blah, blah. And so that that is not good yes. to try to get your point across. But he's also saying truths. The only reason it came off that he's a fool saying some crazy statements is because nobody there took anything he said. And and we know right now that they're kind of an, under investigation right now, ABC and Kamala for mm-hmm. some collusion, right? Mm-hmm. So they all triple teamed him there with, there are no reports. We called the the, the mayor, blah, blah, blah. Of course, the, bro, what mayor is going to say that there's a problem like this in their town? It's going to make them look bad on national TV. Like, of course, they're not going to say that, okay. right? So, but there are factual, actual reports okay. on record yeah. calling cops, complaining to the city. Hey, I saw this. There's this happening right, right here in front of my neighbor's yard. There are actual reports physically on record that... They downplayed him and they made him look crazy. But why would it be smart for him to bring that up? Because it is a big deal. In in Springfield. Yes, but... So how is it a big deal for the rest of the nation? Explain. They're not just these migrants that have been brought in from Kamala's policies, right? But he's referring to just these migrants, right? As one example. Correct. Which is... why. So that's actually the best way to debate is when you provide examples. The problem is he didn't articulate his example properly. Uh But you should not say... That this is a there's a crisis a, a, a migrant or immigration crisis without any examples. Okay. You should bring up examples. Okay. So I think. But a group of people eating dogs or cats is not. It, it, that's not that. If that's act- not a crisis, bro. That's that's a group in Springfield that's doing that. Even if it might be no, no, true no, no. or but not. See, see, this this is where you're getting stuck. What you're doing is you're. He brought up first yes. the excess amount of people in in, in in the country. In the country, okay. So. There is this happening all over different towns, okay. right? A bunch of influx of all this, and it's it's he's trying to pretty much get to, he's ruining the economies of a lot of cities, okay. which is becoming a problem for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of citizens across the country, okay. right? That's what he's trying that's to That's what he's trying to say. That's yes. what he's trying to say. Okay. And then he's trying to bring, here's an example of one town, yes. which I think was actually a good thing for him to bring up mm-hmm. because that town has been publicly exclaiming since before the debate. You mm-hmm. can see some of these reports weeks before. Mm-hmm. They are asking for help, and the city's ignoring them. Okay. Right? So he, that was a good thing that he brought up a situation happening in there. The way he articulated yeah. what that situation was, yeah. and that it's happening, that there are some reports from some people in that town. Yeah. He, di- he didn't specify that part. 
So then people ran it as everybody in that town is facing this same issue. No, right. not everybody. Okay. Right? But what he should have done to really hit home that there are these problems is also bring up other examples of other things in other towns happening. Mm -hmm. So if in Springfield, Ohio, there are reports factually that people in Springfield are saying mm -hmm. about the animals and yeah. this and that, right? He should have brought up also in Central California, I don't know if I sent you this video yesterday, but the the guy who works with the Border Patrol and all that stuff like that and the, all the stuff they're finding with the cartels mm -hmm. coming in mm -hmm. and even some of the cartel members who got caught are literally saying it's the easiest it's ever been to smuggle in guns, drugs, and people. Mm -hmm. I don't, did I send you that or no? no? Okay, it's it's a great piece. But this is a dude, he, he's like, uh, he's um, talking to the, the state officials about this crisis, right? Mm -hmm. And he puts up a lot of this on blast. So what Trump tried to do makes sense it's his delivery is yeah. terrible if he would have said what he said there are problems all across the country here are some examples and then listed those examples mm -hmm. springfield has reports of this okay and the people are facing these issues california is this this place is that boom 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 it would have been a home run. Right, Easy. but we're not Easy. here for what he should have done. But I know. Hold I know, on, but, but, we're but, but here you for can't... what he did do. Correct. And what but, he but did can... do was put a blanket statement painting all the Haitian there there but, to uh, bring it up on I'll, a national but, but I'll tell stage you this. for the American people. Uh huh. It's opened the eyes of a lot of American people to go and investigate and learn about this, and now more people are aware of the different effects mm -hmm. of these giant, large groups of people that are being placed. Not just in Springfield. Mm -hmm. Groups of migrants are being placed all across other towns mm -hmm. with small populations. So by that logic, I should not be worried of all immigrants doing that, what they're doing in Springfield. What you're saying. Okay, that, that doesn't you're even make any brings, sense to me. It's, you're saying uh, it, he's, he's talking about the broader picture of immigration. Correct. But giving a specific topic of something that Americans are not cool with, which is eating them. He's saying they. He's referring to certain people. Mm -hmm. It does... Make it easy to be interpreted as all, but he doesn't say the word all. They are eating them, so referring to the Haitian immigrants, right? Correct. And you just and finished the words matter. And what I'm I, saying which is, is, which is, and we'll move on, but I, I'm saying know, but, is. But I've never once, right now, for the last 10, 15 minutes, have said yeah. he shouldn't have said it in that way. Yeah. I've said, I started off saying he messes up with blanket statements. Yeah. So I've been on the side of saying, don't say in general. Correct. But what, I, what I'm saying, just because he did mess that up mm -hmm. and say it incorrectly mm -hmm. doesn't dismiss that there is truth in that. Mm -hmm. And so if he's to be fact-checked, he should be fact-checked with his statement, yeah. the way it's made, yeah. but they shouldn't make him look like a kook who has no facts in it. We know this for a fact. The, the, the people who are running the debates are not journalists. They're not reporters themselves. They're not on the field going to do the research. They're just reading they're, off teleprompters. They're news anchors. Or, they're just reading information that's put in front of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like voiceover actors with a face. That's a news anchor. Right. So they don't have any information. Sure. They don't really have the information that's given to them. What they, sh if they're, what they should have done right away, the, right after that night or the next morning, is call out, everyone's statements his statements and kamala's statements mm -hmm. but instead they let it go days mm -hmm. that trump is crazy for saying these things mm -hmm. he wasn't mm -hmm. crazy for saying those things it's how he says it right and that and the subject uh i said if he'd been better just avoiding it he's just better better just avoiding but it that's a hypothetical it, it, it wouldn't i think have been he would have been better just do. saying it in a better way sure and both of them okay. don't matter because they didn't happen so the reason that they're there because they they have the the uh, what is it temporary protective status right so they're bringing them Correct. in as immigrants and you know they're making money hold on so they're bringing them in right uh the city of springfield uh volunteered for them to have you know why okay my bad my bad my bad come on the, the city volunteered to have them come in. Right. Now, that does open to interpretation if you're on the opposite side saying, oh, look, they're bringing in immigrants that later can become voters. And since the Democrats brought them in, they're buying votes with allowing them to be here. Here's the truth. Which you can follow that logic down the line, right? What the other side, in this case, the Democrats will say is like, well, look, we're, we're looking out for immigrants and we're bringing them in and they're bringing us great labor and they're doing this and they're doing that. So that's, that's, that's why they were there because I think it's important to 
to point out they didn't come here illegally. They no, they're came, not illegal. This is legal migrants that are here, right? right? That came through, yes, Correct. this administration, right? Yes. Okay, that's important to point out. Yeah. Uh, and, and we can move on. All I'm saying is. But real quick, let me just add to that. Yeah. Is uh, the government who accepts these people in, mm -hmm. they make money. Sure. So, so not only grants the government, or whatever the yeah, yeah. The, 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 the government officials are making mad money. Well, there's there's other benefits, right? So it is you do get a labor force that mm -hmm. you didn't have before, um, which brings uh, work, and then that they spend money, and then you blah 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 blah. So there is reasons to have this. Uh, this specific type of immigration come into the United States, re regardless of what kind of immigrants they so, are. Mm -hmm. Just the problem with that in general mm -hmm. is that the people in those towns mm -hmm. end up facing the struggle. Mm -hmm. They end up facing the most well, consequences. Like Springfield in particular, and this is from having looked it up, uh, Springfield in particular, they were in decline. So the, they're, they're, they were a factory heavy um uh, economy based in that town, a lot of factories. So they were in decline of that. So the the governor uh, accepted them with the idea of, hey, this will help the factories kind of reestablish a, a base of workers. Because and and I'm and I'm going to get the credit of bringing in immigrants. I'm going to look like I'm doing good things for the. So there's a lot of reasons why they were brought in. But, but Springfield in particular the, to, to was the suffering from a lack of workers in the heavy uh, factory based economy that they had. Yeah, so what so I was it say made was the, sense the, to bring. The them in. But the problem is you easily disrupt an entire ecosystem when you have 60,000 people currently in the population mm -hmm. and then you throw in an extra 15,000, bro. Right. That's 25%. 25% okay, so that, exactly. That, that, so the 25% 25 25 of, of exactly. the population is now Asian. In an area that, but, but, but it's not that even about it's not even about who it is. Or, or immigrants. I'm, 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 are immigrants now? Is what you're saying? Taking the jobs that those other sixty or the other uh, what is it? What do we say? I'm just saying that the amount of people coming in, mm -hmm. whatever, wherever they're from, or whatever, mm -hmm. but now coming in and now they're actually being housed and getting money and all this other stuff. It's easily gonna put the people who are already there mm -hmm. in a disadvantage. Right. I'm just saying. It just, well, it, in, it's in gonna make system. things more competitive at the very least. For them to obtain jobs and all that other stuff. Yeah. I get so that. I don't know enough of the details of day to day, mm -hmm. but it definitely there are a ton of people saying this is hurting us. Yeah. People from that, from there who have been there for years. If we didn't know that the immigrant thing was legal, like if I'm just your regular citizen, if I'm watching the presidential candidate say something like that because I don't have all of these facts that you and me have, it could easily be misinterpreted as him saying something negative towards him. Follow me, okay? All I'm saying is if I'm a regular citizen, to me, the idea of them eating them for substance sounds ridiculous, right? But culturally, it might be something that they do. Religiously, it might be something. From what I've seen, it is. I might not Which know. is not even a bad thing. Right. Like, so, I, I'm not even but against. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not against anybody but from your, any country eating animals, dogs, cats. But as your average day citizen in Wisconsin doesn't know that. Your right. average day citizen in Wisconsin. So it's easy to misinterpret. Factually, so, yeah. there's validity in those reports. Correct. And there is some truth in what Trump said. Okay. It's not how he said it. Yeah. We agree that he messed up on how he said yeah. it. And it, it doesn't do him so, any, it's so a, it does him a disservice. Truth, and that's the problem, right? So the, the problem is, and the answer, but the problem is, here's the truth. I'm going to build an entire narrative around it out of the kernel of truth that I know that there are some reports of some eating animals or whatever. So now he built an entire narrative around it and it gets him in trouble. And all politicians do that. I'm not just saying he does. Kamala, what do we talk about? D did the exact same thing when she said there are absolutely nobody in active duty, blah, blah, but blah. But the media did not check Correct. her once. And that's the problem. And, and, and I think we can all both agree that if, oh, well, I'm going to tell you, what I've learned from what you've sent me is that the media has a real one-sided issue and 100%. problem. Okay. It, it is. Dis major bias. It is. Uh, there it is. It, it has a major bias when it goes to uh, what the Republican candidate, whoever that might be, right? At least right now, this media uh, does have that issue with. Any Republican that might say anything that might that gives them room to play with. Which, by the way, right? there's this chart. I forget where you look it up at, but there's this chart that breaks down major media outlets, mm -hmm. and it, and it, I forget what they call it, um, but it's a chart that shows you, gives you the list of these major outlets, and it tells you if they're they if they tend to lean left, middle left, middle, mm -hmm. middle right, right. Mm -hmm. ABC mm -hmm. is on the middle left. Okay. Sometimes they tend to be very left, okay. but they are traditionally middle left. I would CNN does a better job at at 
trying to at least pretend to be balanced than ABC. <laughs> ABC doesn't even pretend to be balanced at some issues. Yeah, yeah. I've seen these videos and I'm like, bro, you're not even giving and, them and MSNBC the benefit which is a, of I've the seen doubt. You prior to, to, to this discussion, but pr yeah. I've seen you share a lot of MSNBC stuff. Mm -hmm. MSNBC is far left. Yeah, far left. Yeah. So, yeah, and so, Fox is right. But obviously. Yeah. Far right. Yeah. Obviously. Now we are going to see what the representation of America is going to be, whether they vote her in or not. Okay. They, can they lean again towards the right and go for Trump? Or are they going to lean against towards the left, which is kind of look looking like they're going to go towards the left and, and, and vote for Harris? Now, do you think this is going to be a fair election? Uh, what do you mean by fair? It's already proven to not be fair. What do you mean by fair? Uh, it, it definitely seems like there's a lot of corruption. I'm gonna. I think I know what you're saying. But there's already a lot of manipulation. Okay. In the current system. Okay. And I and I, I'm gonna to say take something. on votes from people that shouldn't even be allowed to vote. Well, okay. Well, I was gonna say I, I'm hope you're gonna agree with my next with my next sentiment, which is the voting process. I feel is gonna be fine. Really. I, the voting, the actual wow action of voting will be fine. The counting of the votes, the collection of the votes, the people that read the votes. Now, how people get to that idea of who they're voting for is corrupt. That is what we are agreeing on. But I do not think, just like I don't think the last election was subject to ill or bad. You don't think there was any voter fraud? Or any voting fraud whatsoever. Because the proof, again, if we're going by proof, there's there hasn't been anything substantially presented to anyone. Every single time it's brought up in court, it has been shot down. Now, if those judges themselves are corrupt is another story. Right. If we're going to go by this, all, all I'm saying, because you asked for it, if we're just talking facts, like whoa, just... Whoa, 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 it's clear facts, because up until recently, yeah. all the facts you've gotten are from one side. What, what, what I'm saying is, that if we're just speaking on what from, is... From, from the information you've gathered. Yeah, no. If we are going to continue further on in the information in the in this conversation that facts uh once they're on paper like once they're established like and on books and like understood like once it, it becomes a factual thing um how we got to that fact can be questioned but the fact that like let's say that biden won that's a fact so there was enough votes now whether those votes were gained illegally or something that's not part of the fact that he's president right okay. right Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying is I believe that the voting, the factual voting will be actual and factual. How people get to decide who they vote for, I do believe is corrupt by definition because we're having this conversation and we both agree that the media is biased. Are you familiar with mail-in voting? Yeah, sure. So like if you're a soldier or you live out of the country or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah but, but okay. do you see how many people in this country can do mail-in voting without yeah. having been overseas or being stationed somewhere sure. else or whatever? Like, if it's convenient or you cannot get to a voting booth, right, right. you can mail-in so, your vote. And you think all mail-in voting is accurate and I not, think not mess with? If in the la uh, uh, I think in the last election and in this current election, yes. You think all mail-in voting will be factual? Any... Any substantial amount, yes. Mm -hmm. Can there be one or two? Sure. Okay, we're not speaking in blanket statements because we okay. can't. Are you, but in blanket statements, you're saying that it won't be. No. Like none of it, all of it. No, no, no. So I, because that's I, what you. I, so I'm never saying all or nothing. So I'm saying that, uh, the substantial amount to matter. Will there be a 02 percent that is dubious? Absolutely. No, but but here's the problem. In you reality, cannot check yeah. if it, the the problem is. The way we have no checks and balances in our voting system to really check to authenticate our votes. You're talking to someone who who doesn't believe voting should be anonymous. Yes. I brought I brought this up to you, and I brought, uh, you and other people. I've said, why is voting anonymous? If there's anything that this should be, George Martinez voted Democrat, hyphen it voted blank, but it should be fucking stated who voted what. And, and, and even but, if it's not public, it should be on record. Correct. Where. Anyone can file the paperwork. Oh, why, well, as a as a journalist as a, or whatever, journalist, I want to be able to see the. You should, absolutely, mm -hmm. if it's not public knowledge, like in a big scoreboard. Okay, I don't think voting should be anonymous. You know, right. it would eliminate a lot of this stuff. One hundred percent, a lot of this stuff. Why it's voted anonymous? So, I'm going to tell you why. Because it benefits both sides. No side wants it to be a hundred percent. What about accurate? Hi, okay, it, it, so I, I brought up mailing. Yeah. Then I also brought up about now we're talking about anonymous. Yeah. What about the lack of ID. Should people be allowed to vote without ID? You, sh you shouldn't be able to check out a, a, a library book okay, without right, presenting your, right. your... I think your ID should... So you right, should be able to scan it so on stuff. To right like, now, why is it yeah. 
that one. You're gonna tell me a fact or an opinion? No, this is a fact. Okay, you can Give go me look the it up. There's a bunch of articles on say. this. Okay, why is it right now that one party yeah. is specifically pushing against voter ID? Okay, you talk about the Democratic Party is pushing Currently against right now. people. They, they are pushing hard yeah. to make voting not require. Photo no, ID. No, I, oh, voting not require you present. Correct. A, can can is that the case right now though? Can That's you, the case right so now. No, no, no. Can, can you vote without presenting your ID? Correct. You're telling me I can go to a voting booth, walk in, and in, not give an ID? In certain areas or certain methods that they have, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because them pushing for it is no, one no. thing. If I right now can can factually in reality yeah. go and just walk in now, without pause this right now and look without it up, being pre-registered yes. because you, a lot of places you need to be pre-registered like months in advance or a week in mm -hmm. advance or whatever it is or present a valid a, va a valid whatever right, state you live in ID identification. Those as far as I know are the regulations for voting, right? Yep. And the I don't believe that you can go vote look yeah, it up. I I, right don't, now. I don't believe that you can go vote anywhere without an ID. Yes, you that, can. That it's part of legal. It's been done. Okay. And even in the last election. Okay. I, I don't know that to be true. Right now, the Republican Party is saying, no, we must have it. And Democrats are saying, no, it's we a don't. Great, it would be a good idea to have it. I agree. Yeah. It would I be agree. a good idea. Yeah. And so right now, yeah. you there are ways yeah. legally okay. that you can get away with not having to present an ID. Okay. At, at the voting booth. At certain voting for your, booths, for a, certain voting for booths, a federal presidential and certain election? methods that they have either mailing or I would or believe it for smaller, uh, smaller elections like town mayor or something like that. For the but president presidential election, for a presidential yep. election, you're yeah, okay. I'm saying that look, I'm gonna right look now, it on up, record, but I just want to yeah. hear you say that you're stating 100%, that hundred percent right now. I'm not saying this is on all voting locations, all voting booths, but there are many where this is factually a thing that's currently. Allowed. Okay, I, that's surprising. Yes. That is surprising to yes. hear, and it's wrong because 100%. that invites it invites Corruption. mistakes, corruptions, all kinds of stuff. Okay, and so then you can't check every single citizen, right? But, it, sh it should be as easy. Do you as think it would be a val a volume to where it would affect the outcome of the election? One hundred percent. You think whatever amount of people vote without an ID will have enough of an impact to where it is going to determine the new president? So one of the theories because you just said some and not no, no. all. So, but, but I think in certain areas, you get a large amount that can make a difference. You're getting thousands okay. and thousands of these votes? Correct. Wow. So options that people have yeah. where they can go and vote without an ID, without even citizenship, mm -hmm. which I don't think people should be able to vote without citizenship. I, okay. <laughs> Do you think that you could just answer that question? Yes or no. Do, Do you I, think people with... I don't out. think anyone that's not an American citizen should vote for an American Exactly. President. I agree. Even if you're an immigrant. Now, if you're a naturalized immigrant, yeah, or if you get or, a green card, or, or you, you become a citizen, something that's it's one of the rights. It's one of the reasons you're correct. doing it. I agree, but I don't believe any immigrant. Until you have your paperwork, or like any American, shouldn't go and vote in Canada or in Mexico. I agree. 100%. I agree. Yeah. But right now, mm -hmm. non-citizens can vote. I don't in a federal presidential election. Look it up. That is insanity. If that is true, and and if you can prove me wrong that this is not allowed in any possible way, I'll I'll go and film myself and add this into the podcast. Cool. Good to hear. Yeah. All right. But factually, yeah. you can get away yeah. with voting without a citizenship yeah. in certain areas, right? Yeah. And so those things already make it unfair. Mm -hmm. It already messes up this election, and it's not a clear, just democratic election, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you look at a lot of Harris's policies that have put a large amount of migrants, like Springfield, Ohio... Mm -hmm. They've been placing them, and this is all factual. This is all like legal mm -hmm. through the administration. Mm -hmm. They make it legal. Mm -hmm. They're putting a lot of migrants in swing states. Mm -hmm. Why is it? Mm -hmm. study, go and look it up. Why is it that they're putting so many thousands of migrants mm -hmm. into swing states where? They could get away with a lot of these migrants voting for the same reason that it's that is very very uh, very factually known that it's become a fact that a lot of Republican states uh, deal in gerrymandering by a lot of Republican states. Explain that to me. I'm not familiar with that. Oh, gerrymandering is when you keep redrawing or restretching the premise or the uh, ex the extent of like a county. So every year, mm. every election, they'll go back and redraw lines so that they have more 
constituents or less mm. constituents. Yeah. There's done legally, so you can't say anything. That's terrible. Like, it's a terrible way. Yeah. But for the same reason that right. Republicans have done that, I would assume that it's the same reason that Kamala has done that. It, These it, are legal exactly. political tactics to but gain. The, but them, the illegal right? part that is illegal yeah. technically, yeah. that they still keep getting away with, uh -huh. is allowing non-citizens to vote. To vote. So okay. that's the part where it gets a problem. Uh, now, if they're, if they're, if it's a universally accepted that these migrants who still haven't got official paperwork or whatever, whatever are allowed to vote, mm -hmm. then I guess sure. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just like systematic. But it's completely it, systematic. When that you, you say something like that, I'm not questioning that you saw that or that you know that. Mm -hmm. What I am wondering is because it is notorious to get people to care about an election regardless. So it's hard to get people out to vote anyways. Right. So the idea that someone goes, there's people that voted four or five, seven times. I'm like, bro, you know how hard it is to get a person to go vote once? So like it automatically brings up the idea of like yo these immigrants why would they care who the they're not they're not like see what I'm saying so again to the everyday citizen who might not have this knowledge the to hear that it sounds like you, I know how hard it is to get one person to vote not to get that person to come out six seven times but imagine that's hard bro, that's bro not, imagine I'm like yo bro let me pay your rent today let me pay your rent next month mm -hmm. let me pay your rent the after the week the month and, after and they're that they're paying their rents. They're you're, giving you're, them you're getting checks. substantial amounts of monies to go vote. Oh, for vote. sure, for sure. So they go. No, no, hey, no, 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 no. This no, is no, 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 not to vote. Let oh. me not. Let's not say that you're giving them money to vote. Your vote, okay? No, no, no. Let me let me break down. Let me place you in a, in in a town. Okay. Let me give you housing money. Okay. Let me give you food money. All good so far. Hey, remember who did it for you? Okay. If if you but voting is not a requirement for you to get that, no, help. they're not forcing people to vote. Well then, but no, no, but but well then, but do you not see like how? What is that, what if you could get away <laughs> with mean? not, so then ninety nine percent of those people are just not going to vote, and then you get one person that actually goes, oh, you know what, I'm going to actually take it upon myself to get the day off, go tell my work, and go stand in this line and vote. That's gonna. That's a loser. I don't know the numbers. Well, that's a loser's how, errand, bro. That's no, no, no. a loser's errand. That's a because if 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 it's not if it's not an stated, hey, and you're going to go vote for us, right? Then ninety nine percent of those people are not going to go specifically vote, bro. Because then that you're easily getting then a black, large black percentage male charges. of those people are not going to go vote. But I think sometimes it's not believable. But I think sometimes you put yourself, you try to put yourself in other people's shoes. But you come from a place of California, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. this metropolis that's always super busy that lives this very with go, a go, bunch go of life. migrants and a bunch of immigrants and a bunch of other people. But our right. lifestyle, the lifestyle is different. Okay, you go to a smaller town where they have a lot less going on. They have a lot more free. <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess when maybe voting is a fucking yeah, hey, it's a For celebration. Sure. It's a thing. Okay. For sure. Yeah, it's way different than here. Here we don't give a shit about almost anything. Yeah, we, most people here, the, the tensions are so high. Yeah, everyone's always running late. Yeah, it's not like that in other cities and towns. No, I understand. Middle of America yeah. is very different from our lifestyle. Yeah, going to vote is something they're proud of, yeah. and if if they're like, people are gaining stuff. And they know that if they don't vote for the person that got them here legally, uh -huh. oh damn, this dude could throw us out. I'm, I should go vote. But they're not going to know whether you voted or not, right? They're of course not. But what I'm saying is that it's an incentive to draw in more people. Because you can, if you can get away... You're presuming that they'll go vote, is what you're saying. I'm not saying all. Well, the, but, but if you're throwing a large amount of people... And I will tell you that that is... You're going to miss like a large percent of people are not going to actually go do it. But there are enough people in smaller towns, yeah. and if you do this consistently enough, mm -hmm. the smaller towns start to add up. Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. It's mm -hmm. not about big numbers. It's not about a large difference in one place. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of small... It's like having a bunch of revenues of income that are all small, and but guess, they all start to add up. And, and I guess now you went end, from making 50 bucks here, 30 bucks here, 20 bucks here. Now you end up having to have your whole mortgage paid because yeah. you have enough streams of revenue. And, and I guess now, uh, even if you get, let's say even if you get 100, that's 100 votes you didn't have before. 100%. So it would make sense. Yeah. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about world uh, subjects, but just real quick on yeah. the on the on the on the political stuff here at home, right? Yeah. Media will fall under free speech or the right to say what we like, right? Eventually. So when you say media, you're not talking about news stations. I'm I, I'm talking in general. The American media okay. needs to kind of revise um, how they do things. Uh, and I think you'll agree with that. They, that the way that give me an example. Well, in, in uh, and on CNN and Fox, let's just use those two okay. back and forth. Okay, both of those networks need to realize the effect, and I'm sure they do. That's why they do it. Uh, of what they're saying and how they're doing it, 100%. And, and the damage that that's doing to you and me are grown. Yeah. But what is it doing to the 18-year-old kid who is peaking in interest in politics? Right. You're already starting to paint in their mind this image of 
the, the left side or the right side and how it's just a combat. I think you're talking right? mostly about mainstream media. Uh, yes, mainstream media yeah. really needs to, to take, we need some kind of, see, it, and it sounds hard to say, some kind of regulations or standards 100%. to be raised um, either, I don't know, maybe the FCC. I mean, they're, they control what's on the wave. So like, you, you know what the mainstream media is like? Mm -hmm. It's like a toxic, abusive household where you have two parents that are the worst <laughs> and always creating yeah. fighting they're yeah. arguing they're trying to beat on each other yeah and you're just terrified yeah like you don't want to be in this household like yeah. what do i do yeah so let me let me let's get down to the nitty-gritty okay just just real down uh do you think in people talk about where would be better four years ago let me let me let me ask this okay four years from now Four years from today, that's do a good, you? That's a good question. Do you think people well, should be asking that? Four years from now, do you think we will be better off with Trump as president or with Kamala as president? A hundred percent Trump. You think four years from today, you and me are going to look back to today and say, "Look how much better our lives got." Yes. Uh, uh, today, do you think so? Yeah. Okay. And the reason is, mm -hmm. by the way, which I've never been a Trump supporter mm -hmm. for many years. I've been an independent. Mm -hmm. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I don't align to individuals. Let me say me as well. I only, and this is something that I give, got to give thanks to Trump for, because he did this. He piqued my interest in politics before I was an independent and I would go vote and I wouldn't go vote and I would look things up and I wouldn't think, look things up. But it wasn't until he stepped into politics that I really started digging and looking and being interested in like, first of all, just knowing what's happening around mm -hmm. me and took an interest in voting and took an interest in like why and understood why it's so important to vote and to do your research on the candidate that you're doing to give him his flowers. He did that. Also, um, it's a mixture. Trump, in particular, is a is a is a case of what I saw him wanting to do a lot of good and being restricted by the current political system from doing that good. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you one example. So there's an example where they this is in like his first like 100 days when they do a bunch of interviews, right? And he they ask him, "What are you going to do with the doc of recipients, right?" And he says, like any normal, good willing human being says, we're going to look at the issue and we're going to treat the DACA recipients with a lot of care. We're going to be very understanding of their issues and we're going to come up with something that will make them happy and make us happy. The, the left was like, oh, oh, my God. Well, that's that took us aback. We didn't we didn't we didn't know he would say that it was the right. And I mean, the extreme right that got on his ass for saying, what do you mean you're going to be nice? What do you mean you're going to be real facilitative to these people? They should be fucking out of here. They don't deserve. They gave him shit. And then he had because that's his his, his base. A lot of the base. He, oh, well, hold on. No, no. What I really meant was we're, we're going to harshly. And, and then it became this thing where he kind of had to dance for this topic. Because he was getting pushback. When in reality, he was like, yo, I'm going to do my because that's what a smart politician mm -hmm. would say. Well, like, well, of course, I'm going to look into the details. And I'm gonna, he says it. And when I saw the pushback, I was like, oh, hold on. The right is giving him shit. Yeah. And now he'll go and say something where the left is giving him shit. And he's really became restrained. And yeah. I feel and I feel he didn't because he didn't have the political experience right. to maneuver these. And these, the right people around him. Unfortunately, uh, to uh, and it really restrained his ability. And mm -hmm. now I feel he's really stuck on only pleasing the right. So he's really? all, yeah, I feel like he, whatever a he, lot of his current stances are, I think, are very not normal, right? Okay, I love the no tax on tips. That's a great idea. I don't know how other politicians didn't come up with that. That's mm -hmm. a fantastic idea because yeah. that's going to help the left and the right. That's a fantastic kind of blanket help for the entire country since we become into a fucking tipping economy. You can't, <laughs> I, dude, I can't go to Starbucks and they flip the little thing over. If I'm walking up to order my food and picking it up myself, you're not getting tipped. Exactly. Okay. But since we become a tipping economy now, for whatever reason, you go to Vegas, it's 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 an epidemic, bro. Yeah. It's, an, it's 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 insulting. Um, it's a great idea to come through. I understand that, but I do feel that he does cater to the right more because I mean that's who's voting for him ultimately, right? He's really what he what he does is get a lot of people come in from the left. Right, that he and he's hoping to get those votes is why he campaigns, is why he has these meetings, why he does all this stuff, because he knows that he doesn't have all, uh, uh, he doesn't have 
the votes from the left that he couldn't that he could have. So he he but I do feel he caters to the right a lot, just like Kamala does nothing but cater to the left. And that's according to their parties. And that is why a third party candidate, which you and me have talked about, is really the answer. Yeah, we should have had RFK, but the the media Whether it's is RFK corrupt. or it's Jill Stott, whoever it is, but this year Bernie we should have Sanders, had RFK, but they screwed him it over should bad. Be mandatory and to you know have the Democrats, a third party candidate. The Democrats really screwed him over. Sure, it should be mandatory to have a third party but, candidate. The Democratic Party, not all Democrats. Right, it should be mandatory to have three uh, options. You should always have three. You should when you have two options, you, you all you're doing is back and forth. Yeah, you need to have that time break. It's just like who's worse. Yeah, and that's not a good way to to choose. So. The popular vote, and honestly, people, I don't know if you guys knew this, your vote doesn't count. It's all, because it, it really it all comes down to the Electoral College. Yeah. And a lot yeah, of people are going to be like, what the hell is the elect? Look, you got to look it up. Another reason why this system is all flawed, 100%. bro. 100%. The system is, is, uh, the, is the, rigged. The popular vote, which means more people voted for you, doesn't get you the win. But the Electoral College does, which is a bunch of lines. Get, dude, we're already, we're, already, we're already messed up. Bro. We're already messed hey. up. But, but to that, to that, uh, the world in general, is in a place right now, I feel, that, dude, they've lost their mind. Let me answer this question, though, real yeah. quick, because earlier you asked me, and I didn't get to expand mm -hmm. on the, why I think four years from now we would be better oh, yes. off with Trump. Yes, well. So I just, want, I just want to say this before we get into anything else. Okay. So this is what I wrote. I'm an independent. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I understand the true nature of today's mainstream legacy media, mm -hmm. and that is not to truthfully inform, but to lead the American people into either the left or right. Yes. It's a broken system. Mm -hmm. I take in information from all sides and I follow a lot of independent journalists who provide unbiased facts and reports about topics or situations. When someone on the left says something good or valuable, I applaud it. When someone on the right says something good or valuable, I applaud it. The two party system is a scam and I really wish they wouldn't destroy the chances of a third party candidate as they did with RFK this election. Mm -hmm. We Americans have two options, and I'm not excited about either of them. However, the Democratic Party has consistently been showing us that their party isn't even run by the president in office. And they are the biggest threat to the following three issues. Freedom of speech, which they continuously try to censor information mm -hmm. and destroy social media platforms they do not have control over. X is a good example. Mm -hmm. Peace. The Democrats used to be the party of peace. Mm -hmm. Currently, they're the ones propagating and continuing wars. They had war criminal unanimously that every party for many years has seen Dick Cheney as a war criminal. As a war criminal. They've had Dick Cheney now endorsing Kamala, and she came on and said she was honored. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not something to be proud of. Right. Republican Dick Cheney, though. Correct. Okay. Under the Bush administration. Correct. And, now, and now he's... Supporting Kamala, you will get no disagreements here. Okay? The guy's right. a big POS. And absolutely. so, if you if you study him and what he's done, why is he endorsing Kamala? Because he's going to continue to profit off of war. Mm -hmm. Number three, inflation. Mm -hmm. I don't even got to explain that. There's Most a, Americans know how whole, bad it is right now. That's a whole other episode. It, it's yeah. bad. Okay. It's bad. Yeah. I'm not emotionally attached to a candidate in this election, nor do I care for them as individuals. Mm -hmm. But at this point in time, I only see one option that is essential to the betterment of the American people, and that is voting Trump. You can disagree with me all you want. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. We're all entitled to our own opinions. I just hope that this country doesn't go down a path that leads to authoritarianism mm -hmm. and totalitarianism. Yep. Hoping for a prosperous future for all good, hardworking people. That's a so great written speech. Thank you, man. It covers a lot of topics, and it really does express... And so those are my three biggest things but, I care about. Those three things? Yeah. And I do think that the current administration, and yeah. they've proven to show that they are a threat to those three things. Peace, inflation, mm -hmm. and freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. If we don't have that, we're going to fall into a very controlled society. Where the people don't have a voice. I understand that. I understand that. The, the, so now, it, I mean, it's obvious that you're going to vote for Trump yeah. when, when the time was. Okay. There's reason Which, why I can't. Two months ago, I would have never said that. Well, th there's reasons why I cannot give him my vote. Okay. Um, and and I, like we talked about. So things are facts. Things that are means that they're true and they're happened. How we got to that fact 
uh, doesn't matter because it does that doesn't negate whether it's a fact or not, right? Okay. So whether there's corruption to be for that to become a fact, that doesn't matter be, when we're talking about is it a fact or not, right? Okay. Okay. So the fact is he has 34 felonies he's convicted of. Okay. Whether you believe he was rightfully convicted or the judge was dirty, the facts are he he's so that means he himself. Those are on record at the moment that he's still fighting. Hundred percent. Yeah. But the, the facts as they stand are that he is a felon of with 34 felonies. Okay. Uh, so that's one reason. So he can't even vote for himself okay. in, in this election. So well, that, you can't anyway. Okay. So, so right now that's a problem, right, for me. Second, he is factually was convicted of sexual assault. So again, whether you agree with that or not, okay. that is the thing. Why isn't he in jail? Because the statute of limitations in New York, or I think it was Florida. No, New York. Um, and, and I think, I think in the United States, it, it, all rape charges have a statute of limitation. He does owe Gene Carroll eighty eight thousand dollars for that same action, okay. and for the, uh, you know, the, he talked. He said it never happened, never okay. met her. It was proven. So that's another fact. So that so now he is a, fe a felon with a sexual assault. Whether you agree with it or not, those are the facts. Um, two impeachments. So he whether you agree he was should have been impeached or not. In his last impeachment, he was okay. impeached twice. Okay. He lost the popular vote twice. Okay. Whether you want to believe he did it or not, he lost on record the popular vote twice. Um, he was the reason that we were all in a, in locked up in our house for a year. He, the fact is, Trump was president and he put the mandate of wh when we were locked up. It was during the Trump presidency. Okay. He also rushed the vaccines out. Whether you believe they did good or they did bad at the end, the facts are is that he rushed the Black Seas out. He signed the approval and he put it out. It was, uh, what is it, Operation Lightning or something like that, where it was like, rush the vaccines out. That you have told me have been causing issues and been causing and I, problems. I, never took, I was always against the vaccines. Right. So like you always, and mask wearing. Correct. Right, right. So Pretty much everything related to COVID I was against. So And all of that Which now mm -hmm. is factually proven that those of us who were skeptical were right okay but that all happened during the trump presidency started don't it wasn't he started some of the things the actual mandates that got a lot of people fired didn't come until the year after okay but he, so so so, what, so just just to be clear mm -hmm. the B biden kamala administration continued and enforced and actually heightened yep and the i think the rules about covid so it wasn't just trump, i think that the, yes. the defense of uh, oh, I'm um, of continual. They both fucked up. Yes, but the, I'm saying these are the facts that I cannot trust him again with my vote. So for. I'm not hearing, it's, just from my perspective, uh -huh. I'm not hearing a single thing about the American people and their future. All the list that you just gave right now mm -hmm. are mostly things about him. Right. I'm not hearing something from you about mm -hmm. the American people. What, what, what does the American people have to do with my vote? No, I, so, I'm, I'm giving I'm, you. I'm, no, no, I'm asking. I'm asking. Oh, are it, we outside this subject now? Moving on to a different subject? No, it's the same one. No, I'm asking. When you consider voting for someone, yeah. are you thinking about our society, or are you thinking? Oh, I see what you're saying. You get I, what I'm saying? I, am I thinking about the overall ideology of, or the, how he will do for everyone? Correct. Okay, so in like the this, lifestyle of the of not just you, but your the, your neighbors and your community, our state, right. our country, etc. Okay, uh, so when I was talking about my specific mm -hmm. reason for yeah. voting, then I was not considering. Oh, how do that? How will that do for people in Idaho? Mm -hmm. When I was considering my specific reason for not voting or voting, these are the facts yeah. that and I you're entitled to that. Th that lend me to not be able to vote for him again. I will say that I am a little surprised mm -hmm. with you being a podcaster and how vocal you are on social media about things mm -hmm. that the problem with freedom of speech and the censorship that the current administration is trying to do, which will continue on, mm -hmm. right? Like Kamala is on an interview saying that we need to put a stop to X, right? Okay which is currently the only freedom of speech platform that's truly free. Uh, well, I mean, there are a couple other across the world, but like, that's the main one. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that that is not a bigger issue for you. The, As someone who speaks freely you, and vocal. You think that should trump all the other stuff I just said? I, in my perspective, obviously, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but, it, but, but what I'm saying is I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that like a idea of having censorship, censorship under the Kamala administration is not really an issue to you. I'm mm -hmm. just surprised by that. You're, you're, okay. Um, so the only thing I'll say to that is like, uh, you're, you're telling me these things. Yeah. Okay. I don't know them to be facts yet. Okay. So when I learn them like this, the, all the yeah. other stuff I've learned, 
then I will add that to the Rolodex. Yeah, it's so gotcha. until then, yeah, I'll send you some stuff okay. that pertain to freedom of speech and then, stuff. And then, and then, and then, I, and then I will maybe have changed my my yeah. ideology behind it. But I'm just letting you know from my immediate known yeah. facts, those are the reasons why I can't vote for him. Now, the the idea that the continuation of wars outside of the United States um, fall within the Democratic's fault, I don't I don't know how you could make that connection. I, I, and, and, and again, Wait, say I, that one more time. So, like, how how are the like the the like Russia right the Russia war, like the the Israeli okay. uh, going on c- conflict right? Uh, you know the Congo, all that other yeah. stuff. That's like like you're saying the Democrats are like war mongering, like they're war. The current, they're, yes, the current the administration, administration. Yes. Okay. Uh, how how are they, in what wars are you referring to that? Because because now we're no longer in Afghanistan, so we're not. We're not part of the longest war we've ever had oh, uh, for the our, last twenty years. That well, the Ukraine and Israel Gaza mm-hmm. is we're directly involved in those. Okay, directly you indirectly you mean? No, we're directly involved we'll, right now. The Democratic Party wants to continue the wars. They want to continue until there's the winner. Okay. They're they're not trying to stop and neutralize. No, no, so no, no, no. That's where I'm saying it's continuing that, what? and and all we're doing is. Heightening tensions to escalate to a potential World War this Three. This current or administration really bad. of the Democrats is doing that. You're right, and it's not going to change because the same people are going to stay in charge if they win. Correct. Correct. If they win, the, but remember that's that a problem. It's going to be an issue. It's going. It's going to be an issue because they're going to want to keep feeding until. And I don't know what the end game is, is in Israel. He went up there and the phrase he said is, "Give us the tools and we'll end the job." Bro, and that, my, my question is, what's the job? We should have another podcast Part soon. Two, soon. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, where we continue yeah. this because there's stuff that I know you brought a, a few other things you want to talk about, yeah. including this that yeah. we haven't got to t- touch on. But we're almost at a little over an hour and All a half right. now. Well, so I appreciate you but having nah, this me. Was, this is dope, bro. I yeah. appreciate it. My we're heart definitely... is pumping because I'm excited of a great conversation. Yeah, man. man. Nah, yeah. It, it was great, man. I, I appreciate it. Let everybody know where they can find you. Concept Universal and pretty much any and all platforms, Sick. Uh, including Grinder. So <laughs> look out for that. That's funny. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.